And I want you to go ahead and turn your Bibles this morning to Hebrews 6. Hebrews 6. We're going to be talking about the sustaining promise. The sustaining promise. The last couple of weeks, we've talked about worship. We talked about how we come to celebrate, how we come in our celebration, we want to give back. But last week, we talked about hindrance. How his sin can hinder our worship, how sin can take us away from being truly at one with God because of the division that we find in our hearts at times because we fall into temptations of the world. So why is it that draw, what is it that draws us to worship? Why do we even come? Why would we bother? Worship is what we do because we know that God loves us and he's given everything for us. He's given us this, what we're gonna learn about, this sustaining promise that no matter how, who we are or what we face in life, God is continually with each and every one of us. Why? Because he loves. He honestly cares for every single soul on the face of this planet, both now, before, and hereafter. God loves us. That's what Paul was trying to tell the um, those who was writing to, the Hebrews. He's trying to let them know, you need to know that God loves you. Matter of fact, if you study the preceding verses before our text, you'll see that he goes all the way back to Abraham and says, God made a covenant with Abraham and that covenant is gonna be fulfilled through Jesus Christ. And he says, let me even say it more clearly. And that's where we pick up our text. Hebrews 6, we're gonna read verses 17 and 18. So when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it with an oath. So that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we have fled for refuge. We who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope that is set before us. Let us pray. Father, thank you. Lord, I pray at the end of this very brief message today, Lord, I pray we would leave encouraged, knowing, God, that we are right with you and you are right with us, not because of who we are, but because of who you are. God, thank you for bringing us here today. We pray for those that weren't able to make it. But God, I pray that those that are here would hear your word and be encouraged by it. And Lord, even look in the, in, and reflect in their own hearts. Lord, if there's one here today that does not know you, that does not know this promise of forgiveness, mercy, and grace, and what we call our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is and forever will be eternal. Lord, I pray they will come to know your Son, our Lord and Savior, today. Thank you, Father, for all that you do. In Jesus' name, all God's children say, amen. So God here is coming and he's, he's saying, I wanna make it clear I believe God is talking through Paul. He said, I want to make it 100% clear that I love you, that I care for you. I don't want there to be any misunderstanding. Matter of fact, that's what he tells us in our text. It says, so when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise, the, uh, of the promise, the unchangeable character of his purpose. God was making it clear. That word unchangeable, that, but he wants to make it clear to you and I want to make it clear as we move forward it's not about you this promise we're talking about today it's not about you it's about God he wants to convince you if you walk out of this place today this text is to convince you of one thing God loves you despite you despite me and all the things we've done in life, God loves you. Why? Because those that have placed their faith in Jesus Christ they're his heirs they're the kingdom of heaven. They will forever and eternally be with him, no matter what we've done in life, as long as we have Jesus in our life. So he does this convincingly by doing one thing. He gives us a promise. Look what it says. It says he guaranteed it with an oath. Now that word oath is kind of interesting. It means two things. The first you're going to get off the bat, the first thing it means is simply that it's an unbreakable seal, a promise. It's irreversible statement. You see, when God said, I'm going to give you this oath, I'm going to give you this promise, and we know this to be in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, he said it's going to be irreversible. No one can take this away. 
No one can change what's gonna be done on the cross. No one can take away it or deny it. Take away it. I don't know if that's right English, but we said it. He said, I want you to be assured of this one thing. It is unbreakable. It is sealed with the oath of who I am. He didn't make it on the moon or the stars or like I've got up there, the little pinky promise. He made it on himself because there's nothing else in all of creation that can be made an oath by God other than placing it on itself. But the second thing, which I think is pretty interesting, is it means an unshakable boundary. It's a line or limit or restraint that cannot and will not be crossed or overcome. God has put a line in the sand. He said, I will never cross this line. This is as far as I can go. You know how far God said he can go? To always loving you. That's how far he said he could go. You see, what he's saying here is my promise is because I chose to love you through mercy and grace. It's not because you chose me. Folks, we're sinners. We've sinned this past week. We are God's best example of imperfection. Yet God still chooses to love us despite us. He still chooses to be a part of our lives even though we don't deserve it. And God says, this oath and this promise is based on my nature, not yours. But you know what's really nice about that? It also means that, imagine this wall that God has built. And he says, I will never cross this boundary. You know what the wall also represents? It means that there's not a sin in the world. There's not a temptation in the world. There's not anything known to man or unknown to man that can scale that wall and snatch God's love from you. He's built a wall that says the world, the devil, your enemies, and everything you have stops at the wall of God's love. And nothing can steal that from you today. Isn't that amazing? God said, my promise is so big that even if you try to sabotage it, I'm still gonna be there. Wow. How many, how many people give you that promise? How many people have made you the promise they'd be there the whole life and they weren't? How many people have made promises and knows to you only to be broken, yet not God? God says, I will always be there. Matter of fact, he goes on to tell us two things about God. He says that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. What is he talking about here? First of all, one thing God cannot do, God does not lie. And because God does not lie, it makes it impossible for God to lie. You know what God's saying? I made this promise and you know it's impossible for me to lie. That would make God a sinner. So he's saying you can take heart and what I'm sharing with you. You can trust it. You can have faith in this promise. I know the world you live in. I know the hurt that you face. I know the struggles that you go through. I know how you wake up some days and you're terrified of what tomorrow may bring. I know how you feel about your past. I know what you're dealing with in the present, but I'll tell you this. God says, don't worry about it. I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be there. Isn't it great to know that God's with us even when we feel like we can't see him? Amen. You see, there's some blessings that come with this promise. The first blessing is the blessing of refuge. Look what it says. We who have fled for refuge. This world wants to beat us up day in and day out. You've been beat up day in and day out? Have you been there? Are you there right now? Man, you look at your checking account and it just stresses you out and depresses you. You ever been there? You say, a bill comes in, so well, I gotta pay that bill. And you look at your checking account like, <laughs> I can't even get me a happy bill, much less pay a bill. Some of you been there. You wondering if people love you that say they love you? You feel like your family's letting you down? You been there? You feel like the whole world has mounted this huge war against you. And what does God say? God says, you can find refuge in me. That word refuge is a simple word. Most of you know what it means. 
means protection from danger, distress, or some enemy. We find refuge in the sustaining promise that God will get us through it no matter what. He can make it. You know, remember I got the promise, the oath, unscalable? It's the limit. Here, here's what it is. The same way God told the ocean, you won't go any farther, God tells your enemies, you can't come here. They're with me. You can't come here. This is their refuge. You can't overcome my will or my hand. You can't touch my child. You mean you know what that's like? You can do anything you want. How many have said that with kids? You do anything you want to me, but you touch my child, I'll rip your head off. You ever said that or thought that? Come on, mamas, I know y'all have. Don't think my wife is so righteous. She hadn't said, hey, mess with my boys. I'm like, Tony, they're grown men. They're still my babies. God's the same way with us. God's the same way. Find refuge. I know you're hurting. I know you're in distress. I know you don't like the way things are going. I know you're not looking forward to the future. I know you think it's not fair. I know that you think everything is coming against you and you think that the whole world is on you, but come to me. I will get you through the storm. Find refuge in me. I tell you, this old boy goes to God for refuge more than he ever thought he would. God's the place I go when I feel like I have nobody. I have two amazing sons. I got a wonderful wife. I've got an amazing church and I love my staff. But there are times I feel very alone. And I go when I weep to God and I ask for the strength to move forward. Have you been there? But not only is he the God of refuge, he's the God of encouragement. We get the blessing of encouragement. Look what it says, that you might have a strong encouragement because of this amazing refuge that God provides. We have this gain of encouragement. This word encouragement means comfort and peace. We have a comfort and peace that knowing that as long as we're in God's hand, we're gonna be okay. Why? This world will come to an end, but our eternal security is set. We have this comfort in knowing that God is with us, not just here, but when it's all said and done. My friends, everything you own this very day will belong to another, another day. The day is coming that everything you work for will be taken away. You can't take it with you. It doesn't matter how hard you work. It doesn't matter what you do in life. Your house, your possessions, everything is gonna fade. But not the promise of God. God's promise is eternal. You know what he says? He says, this old rock you're living on is coming to an end one day. But the home I made for you is eternal. The house you're living in is gonna rot away one day. But the mansion I built you is for is all, is all of eternity. And the relationships you have on earth, they're not gonna last forever. Not the ones that don't know Jesus. But the ones that know me as Father, as you do, you'll be with me for all eternity. And it brings comfort and peace. When wars come, disease ravages, when financial distress and bankruptcy looms over your head day in and day out, the sustaining promise of God is that you know what? This ain't gonna last forever. This ain't gonna last forever. When you see your kids suffer, you don't even know what hurt is until you see your kids suffer. You wanna fix it for them. How many of you been there, mamas and daddies and grandparents? Yeah, raise your hand, you have been there. Hey kids, look around. Don't think your parents don't suffer when you suffer. I've watched my boys cry. They would never do it in front of you. But I've watched them cry. I've seen them so heartbroken that they were sick and there was nothing daddy could do. And I went in my bedroom and I shut the door and I got on my knees and said, God, be with my sons. Let me bear their burden. Let my heart be broken. Let me be the one. I don't want my kids to suffer. And that's what Jesus did on the cross for you. He said, I'll bear their burden. I'll take the shame. I'll take the guilt. God, God, they don't know what they're doing. But I'll suffer for my children. 
and it brings comfort and peace in knowing that God gave us Jesus to take care of it all, doesn't it? Don't it feel good? And then we have this hope, this blessing of hope. It says to hold fast to the hope set before us. There again, the hope that's set before us is Jesus. We hold fast to Jesus and Jesus alone. The word hope means earnest expectation. It's an assured confidence. It's like knowing it's always gonna be took care of. I think I shared this with you once for every Sunday morning. I get up, get ready. I set all my clothes out. Tony's like, I'm not ironing this week. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm staying in bed. I ain't gonna do it. That's your job. I said, come on, sweetie. You know I can't iron. I can, I just don't want to. I'm lazy. So I don't want to do it. I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna, so I'm gonna go get in the shower and when I open up the store, I, I, I hope my stuff, I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. But you know what? Every time I open up the door, my clothes are hanging on the, on the, on the, wherever she hangs on that day. They're clean and pressed. You say, what are you talking about? I know she's gonna do it. Not because she wants to, but because she loves me. You know, I don't know about y'all, but we've gotten in fights before. We argued. I know, y'all don't even know what argument is in y'all's relationships. You have no clue. You live in perfection. And we've gotten arguments on Saturday nights before. But regardless of how her, how she feels for me, I know she's going to help me the next day and every day after. Isn't it great to know that there's people you can depend on? That's what this hope is. God says, my promise is something that you can depend on. You don't have to worry if I love you. You don't have to go to bed at night wondering if you're still in my grace. But God, don't you know what I did? Don't you know what I said? Don't you know what I looked at? Don't you know what I thought? God, wasn't you there when I lost my temper with my sons and daughters? God, wasn't you there when I lost my temper with my husband and my wife? God, wasn't you there when I, when I, when I was gossiping, lying? God, wasn't you there when I looked at things and drank things and smoked things and did things? God, wasn't you there? Did you not see from the host of heaven the sin in my life? And God said, yes, I saw every single thing of it and it broke my heart, but I still love you. That's the promise. For those that have accepted Jesus Christ, God says, I will put you in the palm of my hand. I will inscribe your name. That means to gouge out. It means to dig. It means to make a deep impression. And God says, you can know that I have you written and inscribed in the palm of my hand. And my, my hand is shut. You know what he's saying? I've built a wall that even the greatest sin of your life can't purge the love I have for you today. Amen. And that's the promise that gets our nose off the dirt of the earth and keeps us going. It's a promise that sustains us day in and day out. I talked to a young lady earlier. Many of you know her. I won't mention her name, but she was shot in the head a year and a half ago. She was coming to church and many times she said, I just don't feel it. And I said, well, sweetheart, you're never gonna feel it until you own it. The last few months, she comes to church without being told. She comes to worship and she hangs out with our college students. We thought she was gonna die. She said, right back here at that door a little while ago, she said, you know what, Pastor? There's a big difference when you own your relationship with God than when you feel you're obligated to it. She said, now when I sing, I sing praises to the God that saves me. And when I pray, I know that he hears me. And when, we, when I listen to the sermons and teaching, I feel the word of God impacting my life. She said, there's such a big difference when you let God own your heart. And I just laughed and smiled and giggled with her. And I said, yes, isn't it amazing how God changes everything? You see, that's the promise. That's the sustaining promise. 
God's going to be with you even when you say, God, I don't want you here right now. God, I'm about to do some things I don't want you to see. I want you to leave the room. God says, no, I won't leave the room. Matter of fact, I'm going to walk in the room and unfortunately, I'm going to see and hear every dirty, filthy thing you're about to do. But you know what? I'm going to love you through it. And one day, I'm going to set you free from it if you'll just place your refuge in me. You see, there's some that just need to place their refuge in God instead of the things of the world. And let that promise sustain you. Go ahead and pull up the last slide. Have you claimed such a promise in your heart today? Now naturally, one part of that I'm talking about, have you ever accepted Jesus Christ? Have you accepted the gift of heaven? Have you let God come in and forgive you of your past, your present, and all your future? But you know what I found as I come to a close? Let me say this. There's a lot of Christians that have yet to claim the sustaining promise of God and live on it. I know I'm saved, but I've got to take care of it myself. I know I'm saved, but I've got to do things myself. And we get bitter and we get mad and we get angry because we want God to work out things the way we want. But when you get claim that promise and you say, God, I'm yours. Whatever you want, I'm yours. You'll find out real quick that God can do some amazing things and get you through your biggest hurts and discouragements. Have you claimed that promise? Do you live on that day by day?